Welcome to this free presentation of the Oscar III installation for Washington State. Our outline for today will cover what an Oscar III system is, how it's installed, the start of procedures, and then the certification process for becoming a certified installer. The Oscar II is a real simple system. You'll see here it's made up of <clears throat> three main components septic tank, a pump chamber, and an Oscar disposal component. The Oscar is simply as a uh, on-site sand coil area recharge. It's an acronym that describes what it is. As you can see here we've got a series of coils laid out on a, on a bed of sand connected to a manifold, a supply and a flush manifold, and then this will be covered with another layer of C33 sand. Now this is a proprietary technology that does two things. It is a treatment unit as well as a final disposal component. The Really there's actually four components to the system. Really we've got the coils. We actually have two versions of the coils, a 25 gallon a day version and a 50 gallon a day version. C33 sand is the treatment media. We need 12 inches underneath the coil. There's a reverse flush headworks that controls the flow of water and, and cleaning and scouring the, the tubing and, and back flushing the disc filter. And then we have the, the tanks, the 1,500 gallon septic tank and a 1,000 gallon pump chamber. The cross-sectional view of an Oscar, in a flat site, you'll see we have a prepared uh, basal area or the ground surface is prepared. We'll have a minimum of a 12 inch layer of sand under the coils. Outside the coil area, we'll, we'll need to have a six inch deep uh, uh, sand bed or sand layer. Again, 12 inches under the coils, coils must be level, and we'll have an additional six inches of sand on top of the coils. When the system is completely installed and after we've had a little time for vegetation to grow, you'll see that we have a very lush green grass growth on top of the Oscar, and it's really actually very difficult to tell where it is if it's installed and uh, managed properly. Now there are six steps to the uh, Oscar installation and we'll go through all six of those now. First we want to do is stake out the basal area. We are going to take the design, compare that to the site, stake it out, and what we really want to do is if we're on any kind of slope, we want to make sure that the top edge uh, or the upper edge of the Oscar is on contour. If it's a fairly straight contour, only two stakes, one at each corner, will be needed. If it has uh, any kind of a, um, a bend to the contour, we may use three or four stakes to identify that, that curve shape. Once we've identified the outline of the Oscar, we want to remove or do the, uh, uh, remove the organic material. In, in two different circumstances, we may be in a, a lawn or pasture area. We don't want to remove the sod, but we do want to cut down all the little tall weeds or grass, remove those clippings, um, and then do, we'll do the next step is the basal prep. If we are in a forested area, we have a lot of leaf dove for leaf mat in the, on the forest floor, we'll probably want to remove that material off till we just barely start getting down to the mineral soil. Then at that point, we'll do the basal prep. What we're doing is trying to create a situation where we have broken the, the, the surface of the soil up, but we don't want to churn it all up. In other words, we don't, we don't need to go very deep. Here you see we're just going two, maybe three inches deep. It doesn't matter what bucket you have, uh, the size teeth, how many teeth per foot. We just want to do this one, um, I call it raking uh, or basal prep um, uh, plowing, for lack of a better term, and, and create these little rows or furrows. Oh, I guess I all should say is we're going to have some material that's going to build up on the back side here. Of course, that will be cast off. Whatever sod or organic material stays in the soil, go ahead and leave that. We, that's not going to be a problem. Whatever comes up, let it come up. That won't be a problem either. In some situations, we may uh, excavate down a little further if we've got enough soil and then do the basal prep. Here you see that the soil is quite dry. This is in the middle of the summertime and this soil doesn't have very much moisture at all. And it really doesn't look like we're doing much to prepare the, the soil surface. <clears throat> but if you'll see, 
even with that all the fragments, you'll notice we actually do create somewhat of a hummock or a hump. And we want this to go along contour. And what this does is with the downward movement of water through the sand from the coils and into the soil, once we hit the soil surface, we, and if we, we don't want to create a, an easy path for water to, to flow uh, along the surface uh, down slope. So by creating these little humps, we prevent water from, well, we just we slow it down so it has a, a more opportunity to be absorbed into the soil. Once we have the basal area prepped, we're going to apply sand. Lots of different methods of getting the sand onto the basal prepped area. You can back up your dump truck right to the edge of the basal area, dump it on. Some people will dip out of the back of the truck. Some people may stockpile and then move it over with a little uh, esca excavator or um, uh, loader. In any event, once the sand is on this basal area, you can go ahead and drive you know, small tract equipment on there to, to move the sand around. Again, we're just looking with the Oscar III, we're looking for... Uh, 12 inches uh, depth uh, of media depth minimum underneath the uh, the coil area. Once we have that sand uh, laid out and smoothed over, we're, oops, we're going to connect the tubing. In the kit that, that comes with the Oscar, or the parts that come with the Oscar II kit, we will have these coils. Uh, you'll need to assemble them in the field, but they'll be marked what to do, cut at the right lengths. <clears throat> we'll have couplings as well as uh, uh, blank tubing to do the connections and these PVC fittings at this point here already pre-done for you so all you have to do is just cut the pipe and glue into uh, at the appropriate places and then sometimes on a uh, site where you may have the Oscar may be following a, a contour and be curved it may be easier to put both of the supply and flush manifold on one side of the row of coils as opposed to one on one side, one on the other. This has a much um, more gentle uh, arc or bend to it uh, than it would be on the inside. <clears throat> if you do put both manifolds on the same side, you will need to take note. You want to keep them separated by a few inches. What you don't want to have is the uh, barbed connecting fittings resting on a pipe that would potentially break if it would, were to get some pressure on it. Now the cover material that's required is just uh, C33 sand. You don't need to put any um, uh, topsoil on there to get things to grow. You're, we're going to be subsurface irrigating this with, with treated effluent, so it will go grow quite, quite rapidly. You may, if you want to put some cover soil on there, if you do, just a few inches, two, three inches or so, but have a very low organic uh, mix in that soil. Uh, you may want to cover with uh, the sand with some straw. Uh, we do recommend getting some uh, grass seed or even sod planted down as soon as possible. Or if somebody wanted to use a, a ground cover such as Vinca Minor or Periwinkle, uh, that would be ideal as well. What we don't want to do is to use the uh, manufactured topsoil mixes that are really, really high in organic uh, and um, compost material. That's going to hold water and appear, make it appear that the system is um, not functioning well, when in fact it's just the fact that the topsoil is holding lots of moisture. So once we've put the final cover sand over the top of the coils, the unit's going to look pretty stark. Again, um, we probably want to put some straw or something down over here. Depend depending on the site, again, we may want to get some grass seed planted on that right away. If this is at the end of the, the fall or into the winter season, not a whole lot's going to grow. Placing the seed down will be there when the spring comes. It'll start to germinate at that point. If this is an installation that's done in the spring and it's going to go into operation almost immediately, Getting some grass seed down there within a short period of time, it'll grow quite rapidly. And at the end of the presentation, we'll show some uh, examples of that. It takes about two guys two hours to put in a, an Oscar for a single family residence. Um, that's assuming that we can get sand relatively close to the site. Uh, but it's a very quick installation to have the disposal component completed. Now the septic tank really only has, uh, I got listed here three, but it's two criteria. We do need to have the, the, the tank on the uh, Washington State Department of Health's registered wastewater containment vessel list. And it needs to be a minimum of 1,500 gallons. And it can be either a single or double compartment tank. 
Um, you could put an outlet filter baffle in if you so chose, uh, but one is not required. Um, either way, it doesn't matter to us what either way. In the discharge tank, uh, where we're you know setting the floats up for the pump, at a minimum we want to have the bottom float such that it'll completely submerge the pump at all times. A minimum of four inches separation between the timer enable float and the high level alarm. Local code may require you to have a, a larger separation here. You're going to need to refer to the, the design uh, or designer to make sure that uh, you're getting the proper um, uh, float settings there. The floats come with uh, float clips already. We recommend that the float tree be uh, cut long enough where it actually uh, rests on the bottom of the tank. Uh, when you got the, the, the floats where you want them, just secure them to the float tree. And we also provide a, we call it a float bracket, but it's basically an orifice shield with a screw in it. You just screw it to the side of the, the riser um, below where the top of the handle would be. Once you've attached the floats, the float tree still rests on the bottom. And here you just snap the float tree in place. The float tree does not carry the weight of the float in the float tree, but it just holds it in the, in the upright position. We do have a reverse flush headworks that will be in place. We're wanting to see this on top of the tank, preferably between the two risers, as you see here. You will notice that we come out of our pump chamber and then do two right angles into the headworks. This allows for the flush line to be plumbed uh, symmetrically and it also depending upon which side of the Oscar is we may flip this around 180 degrees uh, but in either event we want to have the orientation uh, consistent from job to job to look like uh, you see here. We do have the ability on the reverse flush headworks to do a cold weather application or a non cold weather application. Those detailed instructions are part and parts will be found inside the uh, headworks uh, in, in all of our um, kits. So please refer to those and we'll cover that more in detail in our uh, field training as well. If you have risers on the tanks that are taller than a foot, what we recommend you doing is cutting uh, an extra riser, uh, the difference between uh, the height of the, the valve box or the headworks box and the height of the risers. For instance, in this application, the riser for the pump tank, pump tank is uh, 18 inches. So what we've done is then cut a six inch piece of riser pipe, place it where we want the headworks to be uh, located, fill that unit full of, in this case, soil and just tamp it down. And then we're gonna screw the uh, uh, headworks to the riser so that it, it, it stays in place. Uh, on the newer applications, uh, you'll be putting the screws from the inside of the, the box onto these uh, ribs. And if you're at a, at a higher, uh, if you've actually done this where you've risen, raised the, if you've actually raised the headworks box, you will want to plumb down and, and have the pipes rest on the tank as we run the uh, flush lines back to the uh, inlet of the septic tank. Our control panel, uh, we have a specific control panel that allows us to use this um, in a lot of different applications. Uh, we will not be using with the Oscar III the pressure switch uh, or the blower. We do want to have the control panel mounted on a post, not attached to the house in any way. We have motor contactors in the control panels. So every time they clunk, they will hear it in the house. So it's imperative that you do not mount the control panels on the house. Chances are it's going to be right at the headboard of the master bedroom, and you're going to have some problems and have to come back and remove it. Now, once the system is installed, we want to go through the startup procedures, which are really just a quality control check. And what we're going to do is see that we have all the float pump and valves wired correctly and that we got the proper flows and pressures to verify that the system is going to operate as intended. Now, first thing, kind of want to talk about the headworks just a little bit. In the standard single family resident uh, Oscar III kit, we will have a three quarter inch disc filter in the headworks. It's 120 mesh or 130 micron size opening. 
It will have five normally closed solenoid valves and three pressure gauges. Now the solenoid valves are actually irrigation, or excuse me, not irrigation valves, they're sewage valves. They're all normally closed, which means in order for water to flow through the valve, we have to have uh, electricity to the solenoid to activate it. And we also have to have the pump running to have hydraulic pressure so that water will go through the, the valve. If you don't have either one of these, no water, nothing will, will pass through the valve. The valve will stay shut. Our basic reverse flush headworks is arranged as so. We have labeled the solenoid valves with uh, S signifying uh, solenoid, solenoids one through five. We also have three pressure gauges, one, two, and three. Gauge one measures the pressure on the inlet side of the disc filter. Gauge two represents the pressure on the downflow side of the disc filter. And gauge three measures the pressure after the coils in the uh, Oscar three drain field. The control sequence is such where we're going to have 90 doses uh, repeated over and over again. Once we get to the 91st dose, we're going to back flush the disc filter for a quick 15 second blast, a short rest, and then we're going to do a coil flush where we forward flush the coils for, for two minutes, and then we go back to doing 90 more doses. Now with the Oscar 3, depending upon whether there's water available, this may happen one, two, up to as many as four times a day, we may repeat this process. If we're operating at 100% design flow, it will happen four times. Typically with about 50% design flow on, on average, we're going to see about two of these flush cycles happening per day. So if we want to check out and, and manipulate the, uh, the, the headworks, to verify whether the wiring is done correctly, we're going to do, we have to do two things. We have to, again, energize the appropriate valves so that they open up, and we're going to also have to turn the pump on. We have four toggle switches in our headworks, or excuse me, in our control panel. One toggle switch operates the pump. One toggle switch operates valves one and two. One toggle switch operates valves three and four. And then the last switch is for valve five. So to mimic a dose, we're going to turn the pump on and energize valves one and two. And so the flow path will be the green line and the valves that will be turned on again are, are valves one and two. And this will allow the Oscar coils to be dosed. Because valves three, four, and five are closed, the only flow of, 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 of liquid through the system will be to and through out the emitters in the uh, coils of the Oscar. And this is what the flow path would look like. Now, once we've done our 90 doses, we're going to want to back flush the disc filter. The normal flow <clears throat> through the disc filter is, as you see here, the water flows on the outside of the discs to the inside and then flows from the center after it's been filtered out to the coils. What we're going to do is we're going to reverse this flow. So we're going to pressurize the internal portion of the disc cartridge forcing the discs to separate slightly and then having a high velocity, high pressure flow of water, uh, removing debris that's with inside the discs themselves. To do that, we need pump uh, hydraulic pressure. So pump one will turn on. We'll turn valves one and two off and we'll turn on valves three and four. Now the yellow line will be represent the flow path. Here, three, again, valves three and four will open. This will cause the liquid flow to go backwards through the disc filter and then back to the tank. And this is what that flow path will look like. At this point, virtually all of the pump's capability, 28 to 30 gallons a minute, is going to be forced through that small disc filter. So we get a tremendous amount of cleaning every time we do this back flush sequence. Once the disc filter has been flushed, we're going to now mimic what the coil flush would look like. In this case, again, we're going to need to have pump one on. We're going to turn off valves three and four, and we're going to turn on valves one and two. And because we want to flush the coils, we're going to have to turn valve five on. So it's going to be very similar to a dose, except that with valve five being open, 
we're going to relieve all that excess pressure and flow so that we scour the tubing. And again, this will be the flow path that will, was represented by the, the green and red lines. Now, when we measure the flow, we use these NetFM meters, and they're set up just a little bit different than your normal um, flow meters. Go through how we read these. <clears throat> We're going to have a, an odometer reading on the top, and we have three uh, red needle dials along the bottom. On the right, you'll see the, the, the dial on the right is uh, each digit is one gallon, so each rotation will be 10 gallons. In the dial in the middle, the red dial in the middle, is uh, each digit is a tenth of a gallon, so one rotation is a, a, a one gallon. And on the far left, it's uh, one hundredth of a gallon, so one full rotation is a tenth of a gallon. So if we were to read this flow meter, this first back black uh, background two actually represents 200. The second two is 20. And the painted zero on the uh, face is a, is a placeholder for the reading on the, on the right dial. So if we were to read this dial and record what the flow says, we would say it was 220.64 gallons. It's one thing to note that we have two different coils. The OS50 and the OS100 coils have a flow rate once they're completely pressurized, of 0.35 for the 50, uh, OS50 coils, the OS100 coils are at 0.7 gallons a minute. The question then becomes, well, what do we, what do we record? Here we're going to record basically pressure and flow. When we're dosing, we're only really concerned about what the pressures are during the dosing sequence, as well as the flow rate. And again, we measure this once the pressure has been stabilized on, on all three of the gauges. Now, a little bit about the certification process. The first step, which you're doing now, is the classroom or online training. Once you're through with this training, what you'll want to do is to give me a call. And what we'll do is we'll place your name on our uh, certified professional list that will be posted on our website. Then once you do your first install, we'll have a representative come out and, and walk you through the uh, four main um, components. Actually, there's two main components uh, for the, uh, the installation. Uh, our time on the field really is probably less than half an hour. When we get there, we're going to expect that the tanks are already installed in the ground. And if you're comfortable, the, the sand first sand layer is already down with the Oscars. We'll be showing you how to plumb the Oscars correctly, placement of the headworks, setting the floats, and that's really pretty it. It's a pretty simple process. Once then the electrical is done, we'll come back and do the starter procedure, make sure that all that's working correctly, and then any additional training as needed. Uh, we're always available for phone calls, emails. If we need to come back out and do some other training in the field, we're more than happy to do that. And of course, you're more than welcome to rewatch this video any number of times, anytime you'd like. We want to thank you for uh, your time and interest in the uh, Oscar, our Oscar 3 product. Thank you.